Now, I made a desperate prayer. Be careful when you're going through desperate times or when you're going through challenges. You'll take desperate decisions, and some of them you can regret, others you can actually celebrate. Yes. If, you, if there is a ray of hope for tomorrow, mm. just stick on that. Just stick on that. There is nothing that has happened to you or that you're going through that hasn't happened that is true. to other people. Mm. You are not the first one to go through that challenge. It could be a loss of business, mm. it could be a loss of spouse, loss of parents, children, loss, loss of sense of direction yes, in yes. life. You, you, you feel you have lost it all. I had moments of, <laughs> of dying and getting back. <laughs> there is a point I really saw that mm. I had gotten out of my body. And if I had been given a choice, you know, like to choose like now, I wouldn't have gotten back wait, into that body. Wait, 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 I just... I saw myself get out. Like, I was somewhere and I was seeing my body on the operation. One of the lessons that God has taught me is that he has put people in our lives for a reason and he works through people. And so I should never get tired of asking for help. Yes. Because it is him that touches those hearts. And so I see the doctors trying, pushing my chest, what, what. Mm. Like you were out of your body and watching them do all these things on your body. Yes, 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 yes. Hello everyone and welcome back to this YouTube channel if it's your first time. Thank you so much for clicking and you're welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you too for coming back to watch this video. So in today's video, I have a special guest with me. She is going to be sharing with us her life story. It is quite inspiring. She has been through the ups and downs and she's going to be taking us through the journey to finding her purpose. I would like to introduce her to you and so that you get to hear what she has for us. Yes, you're welcome, my dear. Thank you. It's such an honor to have you on this platform. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Would you please tell our audience who you are? It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor for me to be here. Yeah. My name is Diana Navasa Muhaire. I am a personal growth coach. I am a disc trainer. I am a mother. I'm married. And I'm a Christian. Wow. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank Josephine. you too. Thank you too for coming. It's quite a pleasure, guys, for someone to come out and say, you know, I have a story and I think it can inspire someone out there. Yeah. It's, it's quite an honor. Mm. So would you like to take us through briefly who uh, who Diana was before this interview that we are actually having, before this conversation. Wow. Yeah, where the journey starts from. Well, the start... journey starts in 2013. Okay. Uh, when I have a twin pregnancy, um, because we wanted, we wanted to finish giving birth so fast, yeah. so that we go and look for money. Money, yeah. yeah? Mm. I, 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 I love to spend a lot of time with my babies. And every time I give birth, I want to first rest a little bit from the noise of the world yeah. and give them time. So I was, I was at that point in my life where I felt I still had a lot of energy that I could invest in my babies. So yeah. I agree with my husband. I'm like, you know what? We have always believed that God does wonders. Yes. And much as, you know, genetically, both sides, they were no twins, yeah. but like, let us... No, let us just believe God. And so we kneel beside our bed, we hold hands, and we say, God, you are the mm. creator. We are asking for twins so that we could make three and seal it. And God hears, by the way. Every yes, time we yes. ask, God hears and answers. And then he answered. Yeah. So one month down the road, as usual, I miss my periods, and boo, we go to check. It's a multiple pregnancy. Wow. We were so... <laughs> excited so mm. excited mm. so 2013 in there yeah and um, at the same time my mom had been diagnosed with cancer mm. and we had to bring her home okay. here with us in Kampala mm. and we started taking care of her so the babies the pregnancy was growing mm. and mommy was getting worse so around March 
daddy comes to check on the wife, I was so close to my father. Mm. So daddy comes from the village yeah. to come and you know check on the wife. And uh, my father was raised an orphan. He, he grew up as an orphan. Yeah. And um, he told me mommy had turned into everything. He was the sister, they had no sister. He was a sister, he was the mother, he mm. was the granny, he was, she was, she was literally everything to yeah. my dad. And so he had grown, they had grown into this bond that he felt mm. with the absence of mom, life would be so difficult. So difficult yeah. And he wasn't ready to face that life. So he called me uh, on the balcony and he said, my daughter, you know I love you so much. But I've always heard, he wasn't born again, daddy. Okay. But I, I've always heard you talk about that God. If he is alive, mm. and if he really works, he should not let my wife die before I die. It was, at first it was funny. Mm. And I was like, daddy, you're kidding. Mm -hmm. Mom is not going to die. Like, who doesn't know when you have cancer, like, you're already written off. So he was a little already getting stressed about that because now all of us were in school and he was staying at home alone. Mm -hmm. So he was already lonely. Yeah. And our traditional African men, he was always the king. Man was always running around, mm -hmm. doing everything. Everything, yeah. Everything for him. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to talk to him and I'm like, no, dad is, mom is going to be fine. She's going to get back. But he couldn't, he didn't believe me. Mm. And he told me, I am going to go back home, but prepare to come and bury me. Oh. Now she was going through chemotherapy and okay. radiotherapy okay. and she had started losing her hair. Mm. But I had faith yes. that she was going, to, going be to be well. well. Mm. But my father, for him, if you tell him you have cancer, mm. that is it. like that is it. And so, uh, yes, I tried to talk to daddy and mm -mm, was like, no, I am not a kid. So he left, he left and went back for the village. Mm. He had been having manageable diabetes, really. It had never shoot, it was manageable. Mm. And um, when he went home, he stopped his drugs. That was number one that yeah. he did. He stopped his, his drugs and, and that made his, his, um, his pressure to, to go come, high. To go high. Mm. And so very soon the, he was organized with hypertension. So it, I, it, it began occurring to me that what the old man had told me is starting to happen. It's starting to happen. Mm. Remember I have a twin pregnancy. Now yeah. the doctors out there will tell you that a multiple pregnancy is not a normal pregnancy. Yes. So yes. it had to be handled with care. care. Mm. And here yeah, I was taking care of a cancer patient. Now I have to, you know, to take care of daddy as well. So it was a little bit stressing yeah. for me. Mm. That was March. A month later, um, a month later he is admitted like seriously admitted in hospital. Okay. And two weeks after that, daddy dies. And I think his prayer was answered. Oh. Yes. So he passes on. At that time, I think, I remember we buried him on Easter Monday. That was about early April. Mm. So we go bury him and come back. Uh, we left there, mommy, but after a week, she had to come back and resume her, mm. her chemo and radio. Oh, that was so bad. At that point, the, the pregnancy is still okay, mm. but the doctor was beginning to say there are some indications, some things that we are not understanding. Yeah. And uh, so I am put on a routine checkup, of a, a weekly routine checkup. Check mm. It was. It still was fine. But now they were they were identical, so they, they were in the same sack. Now the, the, the babies that are in the same sack are prone to more complications than the yes, ones that are in that different are sacks. Yeah. So at some point mm. I go for a checkup. Now the one who who the one who was older, Babai mm. Takakulu, the one who was older, mm. 
the growth rate mm. had, had Redu started reducing. Oh. So that was, you know, that, that was not normal. Yes. It wasn't normal. Mm. Of course, they now immediately they told me, uh, this one who is not, now the rate is not reducing, it's, it is not a good sign. Actually, one of those radiographers told me, Madam, if you want to avoid trouble, just terminate this pregnancy. I think at that point what? I must have been about five months so pregnant. the babies had grown. Yes. But how could they give you such a suggestion? Now, I, I, and, and that's why you need to be very, very careful whenever yes. you go to some of these hospitals. hospitals. Yes. Because not every, everyone, everyone who is there is mm. not there for the same cause. Yes, yes. Some of them are agents. Yeah, of the devil. Some of them are agents of the devil. Yes. Um, I used to go with my husband, so we never paid attention. We were definitely hurt, but we were like, probably, did maybe. You, did you think about changing a hospital and going to a different one? Because really, someone who is telling you to terminate mm. your pregnancy mm. at that time, you're mm. not safe even being with them. No. Mm. You didn't change the hospital? We didn't change. Okay. Why? This was a scan person. Oh, okay. This was I thought not, it was the doctor working No, this was you. not the doctor. Okay. And we were, you know how we get so attached to our doctors, yes. our gyna, oh. gynecologists? Yeah. So I was not, I was like, now I had a history with this doctor. This yeah. was not my first baby. So you didn't take it that serious? No. No. Okay. I was like, okay. That mm. is his opinion. Mm. That is his report. You know, as a Christian, I told mm. myself, God has the best report. It is what I'm going to believe. Definitely. All I know is that I asked, he gave. Mm. Okay. And um, so I went to the doctor. I said, no, the doctor was really a very good one. I said, okay, this is not good, but mm. yeah, we can move. We can walk the journey. Okay. And uh, so, but now, I was moved from one week mm -hmm. to twice a week. Okay. For me, that rang something in my mind. But yes. because now I was still, tr uh, the bond I had with my father was closer to the one of my mother. Oh. So I, I, <laughs> somehow I never even got to mourn my father. Yeah, because you were also in this, uh, yes. you were pregnant, uh -huh. and you had all those issues. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So. I, I, I tell mommy this is what is happening and you know, she was like, no, let's pray. God, God will carry you through. But when that begins to happen, mm. and I'm like, eh. you know, traditionally, where I come from, mm. they, they told us when you're pregnant, you, you don't bury. Like, that is what I also hear. I don't know why, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know anything about that? You can let us know down in the comments really? section. Yeah, yeah. And so, my heart started ringing, you mm. know, to those voices that, why did you even come? Mm. Like I, could, I couldn't fail to bury my father. Yeah. So I was like, no, I don't think that that can, that can cause harm. Mm. I couldn't connect it at all. Mm. At that time, mommy was definitely going through chemo. She mm. was in and out of hospital. Uh, thankfully, there were some relatives mm. who would my, my siblings would come and help here and there, but mainly she was home. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's quite stressing. Mm. It was quite stressing at that point, at that moment. Okay. But, but I thank God for the grace. At that moment, I was still working. And uh, thank God mm. for good employers who are very understanding. Yeah. They, they had reduced my working hours to, uh, I think, I would work for about 15 hours in a week. Yeah, mm. they had really understood my, my, my problem. Mm. But time reached, the doctor recommends total bed rest so I could no longer go to work. So mm. I asked for, for sick leave. Mm. The sick leave got expired. <laughs> As we go on, mm. you realize, I also asked for maternity leave. Mm. It expired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. But I was able to go back the next year and mm. they will come to me back. Oh. So they, they, that, is, I, that is quite a good boss. Yes, mm. yes. So 
um, those are some of the angels along the, along the way when you're going through hard times. Yeah. Whenever you're going through hard times, the Bible says God is so close to those who are heartbroken. Yes. So close. Mm. But it is usually very hard for you for to you see to those see angels. But when you become intentional, mm. you'll actually see the angels. Yeah, so most me, times you are blinded by what you're going through. Exactly. It is yeah. always so heavy. And if you're there and you're going through such, I, I, I can relate, I understand. Yes. But be a little bit more intentional with recognizing those angels. The, 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 it's like God's hand carrying you through yes, yes. the hard times. Mm. And so for me, those were the first angels. Wow. And, and I, th I thank God that I was able to, to recognize that. So it kept me strong. I was like, even if I'm going through a hard time, mm. it was a private organization. Mm. I reached a point, they stopped giving me full salary. They, they kept giving me half. Okay. Yeah, but at least I had some money that was mm, coming that in was because coming. I had very many. We had big bills. Yeah. And so mm. I get back to the five months when I, I have to go back to, to for checkup mm. twice, twice a week. So we keep going and we reach a point that the other twin totally stops growing. growing. Oh. At that point, now I remember one, one time we went for checkup mm. and we couldn't get the heartbeat. We couldn't get the heartbeat. So the doctor was like, of course, they will say, appears. <laughs> they will not confirm. <laughs> say, appears. Mm. You know, and so I was like, now I have to carry something dead within me and another person dead within mm. me. It was really torturing. Bad, yeah. But I had this faith. Remember that I asked from God and he gave me, so this yes. baby is not going it's to not, die. Mm. So two weeks after that, we go and we get the heartbeat. I'm like, now what do I take? So I reached a point, every, every time we went, they would check heartbeat because now it was a little bit delicate, extremely delicate. Mm. But I told the doctor, don't tell me. Wow. Don't tell me. Mm. As long as there's someone alive, mm. I don't want you to don't know. You don't want to know. Mm. Yeah. So the doctor actually, you know, sat with my husband and mm. said, you know what? As if you're able, I advise you fly to South Africa. They, they remove this one who is not growing mm. because this one who has not growing completely started affecting the other one who is and growing who is growing so mm. the rate reduced and you can imagine how you pass you have gone through that yeah. when how you pass the border border stage and ah, this mm. one has about five yes and then i quickly remember the torture that i'm going through yeah. Yeah. so i reached a point as like i didn't know whether both of them were Okay. Alive, mm, okay. or one was dead, mm. but it was confusing. But I said, all I know is that I have babies. I have children, yes. So coming to seven months, mommy now gets admitted. Mm. I am torn in between what do I do. She's admitted at Cancer Institute, mm. and my situation is getting worse. worse. I reached a week when my platelet count was below the normal one the list wow you know there is they are in ranges mm. in ranges mm. there's this lowest to maximum so my platelet count was below the lowest what and uh, the doctor said you know what we are now going to admit you mm. because at any time blood is going to start oozing up from any hole from your body oh. so just imagine that time my baby was not yet two years my first born, mm. I have a less than two year old at home. I am going through that. I have a sick mom. Wow. I have a family that, that time so was taking care of. We had very many in-laws at home, mm. young people that were taking care of. So it, <laughs> it was difficult. Quite a lot, yes. It was. Hard. And the fact that it found you when you were carrying babies in the stomach, uh -huh. and that is the time you, you don't actually need stress. You don't. That is the time you need to, you know, have that time of yourself to mm -hmm. uh, have healthy babies. Yeah, yes. yeah. But you see, 
there's nothing that God allows mm. you to go through that can consume you. Yes. His grace is always sufficient. Yes. I don't know how I went through, mm. but all I know is that I chose to live one day at a time. At a time. I would count this day or sometimes the next hour. Mm. But I, I, I reached a point I would be checking myself. Mm. Do I Am have I blood okay? anywhere? Mm. <laughs> so is my blood oozing? <laughs> mm. So mm. I, if there's a point I, I got a spot. Mm. I was so worried. I had to rush to hospital. And like, we don't know. For sure, we don't know. And all I did was to commit myself in the hands of my creator. I'm like, you know what? This I can't control. And this is why I want to encourage our audience that mm. there are things that you can control that you may be going through. Yes. Control those ones. But the ones that you can't control, leave them to those who is able to control them. Yes. Because otherwise you will crash. Yes. You crash. Mm. I, I, I would have crashed and I would have died and would be missing. I wouldn't have met you, for example. Yeah, but you we know. thank God. Yes. You're now telling your story. Mm -hmm. And um, about 30 weeks, I had gone for checkup. Mm. And uh, remember, mommy is admitted. Mm. I'd gone for checkup and the doctor arrested me. You know how you reach hospital and the doctor says, You're not, You're not going anywhere. Going anywhere. Mm. We either save you, or he used to say, I am the factory, because you have higher chances of getting more babies. Yes. Or we either save you and lose the babies, or we try to save the babies and, and lose, lose you, you both. Oh, that was... And so at that moment, mm. we had to decide. Mm. Of course, my husband couldn't force me. He had his opinion, but it was mm. all on me. And I said, doctor, if it is to... At this moment, if it is to save me, mm. I knew God was always a God of second chances. As like, I am here. I'm not mm. going anywhere. So poor mommy had to go back home, oh. you know, look for things mm. and you know, find me at hospital. Usually a C-section would take 30 minutes and the babies are out. But my husband tells me he waited for over eight hours outside the theater. What? Of course, um, the babies were out. They mm. showed them to me, but I never had the first one cry. I had the, the second one cry. So, I didn't know what, what, I, didn't know what I didn't know what was taking place. Mm. As far as the last scan, my husband tells me that the both heartbeats were traced. Okay. But I didn't hear that baby cry. But, mm. And that baby was so black. Now, later on, I read and discover that the baby, that baby had died. <laughs> In your stomach? In my stomach. Mm. So I, I carried on for about you know, maybe three, close for two more months with that baby. Oh. And maybe that is what was draining my platelets. Oh. Yes. That is why the doctors were telling you mm -hmm. about the blood. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. yes, oh, yes. That was so sad. Yeah. Mm. So I get arrested in hospital. Yes, we go for the operation and I stay in. Why I stayed longer, I had moments of, <laughs> of dying and getting back. <laughs> I think if I can go, I don't know the medical like term. Like from the theater? Yes, yes, oh. yes. There is a point I really saw that I had gotten out of my body. And if I had been given a choice, you know, like to choose like now, I wouldn't have gotten back wait, into that Wait, 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 I just don't get this. Like you felt yourself get out of your body? I yeah. saw myself get out. Like I was somewhere and I was seeing my body on the operation. Wow. My body on the operation table. Was your husband aware of this? He was waiting. He didn't outside. know anything. No, oh not at God. all. Wow. Yeah, and so I see the doctors trying, pushing my chest. What? What? Mm. So I think what? What? It, it must have had something. Like you were out of your body and watching them do all these things on your body. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And at that point, mm. I don't know. God was really so far, because I was like, 
I was like, in space, I didn't see anyone. Mm. I hope to have a conversation probably with the angels or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just there. It is, you know, it brings so many questions. <laughs> How did you know that you were even dead? Because, honestly... <laughs> Yeah, some spiritual things might mm. be hard to understand. Yes, truly hard to understand. Because you you would recognize that I'm dead. Yeah. That is me. Yes. Were you yes. able to see anyone else? Like you were in space. How did that space even look like? You know, there are a lot of questions. Very many questions. Mm, yes. If I go into that, would I but yeah, definitely. from our story? Mm. Yeah, but that is what happened. I was mm. able to see that. Mm. You, you see, we are spiritual beings. Definitely. We are spiritual beings. And when you are in the spirit, you, yeah, you can understand that. You will understand that. Mm. I, I, I don't have how I can prove that to someone or mm. how I can elaborate more. Mm. But for some of you that are out there that have gone through such, mm. they can actually tell you that once you die, you actually know that you have died. Wow. Yes. It's 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 another experience altogether. Yeah. So they tried what? I saw them pushing woo, woo, those things I don't mm. know how they call them. Mm. And I was able to come back. So they kept me How there. did it feel when you were coming back? Did you see yourself get back into your body? No. Mm. I didn't. But I recognized that I was now in your body. In me. Okay. Mm. Mm. I didn't feel myself getting back. No, mm. I didn't. Okay. Yeah. And so I, the, I, uh, the, the next minute, mm. I hear myself now I am. You see, when, when you're out, you're like in, in space, you can, you be seeing yourself, you're in space. But now I was contained somewhere. Yes. And now they started calling me Diana and... You, you I responded. Respond. Oh. Previously, I was talking and no one was responding. Yeah. Maybe that is what I was able to recognize. Mm. Maybe the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so at that point, um, long if I can try to shorten it a little bit, mm. I, um, I, I get back and, and there is a great sigh from the doctors. But I'm kept there longer. I don't know whatever they were doing. Uh, I had, they had first done half uh, anesthesia. Now they gave me full. I don't know what they were doing. Okay. Whatever they were doing, now I didn't know. Mm. And, and uh, so I get out of theater. So when I get out of theater, I wake up the next morning. Next morning. Okay. And uh, my husband was there waiting. And he told me he was going to the village. What were you going to do? He told me he was going to bury the other baby. Oh. So I confirmed that the other baby was actually dead. dead. Yeah, I'm so, so sorry that happened. It is okay. Mm. It is okay. Yeah. Everything works out for the good for of the those good who love God. God, according to his, his purpose. purpose. Yeah. And plan so, for your life. And plan for your life, definitely. Mm. And so. This other one remained, and at that time I was able to see her. She was she was 900 grams. Le that is less than a kilo. Mm -hmm. I could put that baby on my palm. Sorry, to ask, the one who died was a boy. No, they were both girls. They were both girls. identical. Yeah, they oh usually, yeah, yes, yeah, same yes. sex. Mm. Yeah. So I could literally put this guy baby mm. here. Wow. Now I made a desperate prayer. Be careful when you're going through desperate challenges. times or when yeah. you're going through challenges you'll take desperate decisions and some of them you can regret others you can actually celebrate yes but yes. be careful when you're going through challenges so i made a desperate prayer i looked at this baby mm. <laughs> i think the leg was this big that the limbs all limbs legs arms like this big really I looked at like a thing, I didn't see anything close how to old, life. How old was the baby? The, I was operated at 30 weeks. Oh, okay. That's past seven months, yes, so yes. it was safe. And uh, I just looked at that like thing as like... Mm -mm -mm. So, with my own mouth, I prayed a desperate prayer and said, God, 
I don't have the grace mm. to go through this. I am praying that before today ends, mm. this one also follows the sister what? and dies. That was so bad. I have just said, when mm. you're going through challenges or mm. desperate times, there are some desperate decisions that you have to make. Some good, others bad. bad. Oh, yeah. So it is important that you have someone by your side. Or if they, or you mention it to did someone. You, did you make that prayer with your mouth or you just said with it in my your heart? Very, this mouth. Was there anyone hearing you? I don't know. Maybe the nurses, I don't know. But I had been called into the premature, mm. you know, the neonatal section. Mm. So I was looking at this lifeless thing and I was like, mm -hmm. but she was breathing. <laughs> Her oxygen was normal. Mm. And uh, of course, I started the stress of no extract milk, what, what, mm. those things. And the little thing was not dying. Wow. At that point, God seemed so far. Yeah. So far. So my mom asked for permission. She left hospital, you know, as used. When I was you... about to ask where was mom by then because you, you, you are told us mom was sick. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. So she asked for permission. She came mm. and stayed with me the first night in hospital. So usually, as used, when I'm giving birth, mom is there. She's mm. bathing me, da, 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 giving me all, all, all the sorts TLC. Of treats. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But this time, and I think that is what broke my heart, that mommy could not be with me long enough. Yes. Yeah. Remember, my husband now had to go and bury in the village the other one. So mm. I had to stay here. So that night, mommy came, mm. and, but she couldn't stay longer. So mm. she had to go. So they go bury and they come back. And we start the journey. Mm. So we start the journey. Mm. We are in that hospital. For three weeks, the bills are accumulating. Now we have to look out for a specialist who was and all all they could do was to deal with prematures. And so we had to. It was also another tug of war to mm. leave that hospital mm -hmm. because they were. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe, you had to change the hospital. We had to change hospital mm. to get special attention. Okay. From from the premature neonatal specialists yes and so we yeah we changed the hospital mm. and and we went there and we and i i i thank god that we changed mm. because i think i was at a point of losing myself oh let me ask is that baby okay now we are getting there okay okay <laughs> because i'm already feeling anxious i'm like please you made a very bad prayer and i i would wish that not to happen oh my goodness yeah let's go let's go on <laughs> yeah so one one of the things that that hospital did it, mm. this lady was she was doing private practice she had retired mm. and what they did was to to deal with self-care taking care of me as much as the baby needed care, mm. they appreciate that the mothers or the parents as well need care. And that is not what I was getting from the other hospital. Okay. And I'm grateful. That was another angel. I'm grateful to God yeah. that because now I was able to accept mm. what I was going through, I embraced it and I became positive. Previously, I was so negative. Oh previous are so negative mm. and so them taking me through involving me in the process in the care we started doing kangaroo self-care is very important especially when you're going through a hard time mm. um, even when you have given birth normally as yes. a mother mm. it is so important it is one of the things that I've discovered that that is uh, that is a preventive measure for postnatal depression. Yes, yes. So remember, me, I was prone to all forms of depression. I hadn't mourned daddy, my best friend. I hadn't, I was seeing mommy really deteriorating. And then at that point, I wished I was there for her, but I couldn't, yeah. And then I'd, I'd lost, I'd lost one of my babies, like literally, and our finances were drying up. Yeah, because of the so many expenses. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. 
And, and I've just remembered one of the support groups, uh, our marriage fellowship. Wow. They were there for us. They prayed, they checked on us. Like they, they did it in turns. And uh, we need people. That is very true. We need people. It's and truth is, as you said earlier, God will place people in your life. Yes. You just need to recognize who these people are. Yes. Because yes. sometimes we tend to, when you be in these challenging times, sometimes we tend to isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil wants. Don't mm -hmm. isolate yourself. This is the time for you to find out for people who God has placed into your life for that season mm. that you are going through. And then also, I think what I learned through there is in, that, in, the, in that whole process mm. is to ask for help. You know, <laughs> in April, my, my father dies. Mm -hmm. And then we tell our, our, our friends, mm. our social groups, we have lost. The of baby. They came. They oh, came. my God. Um, along the way, before, before I get operated, mm. my grandfather, the one who produces mommy, dies. We tell people and they come out and support. So this time, when the baby came out dead, eh, I agreed with, actually, that time my husband couldn't talk to me. He just decided to keep quiet. Maybe that was, that is one of the ways he was also grieving. He, he, got, he got his best friend who was a relative and they, they went together. They buried and kept, they were like, this is already too much. We have bothered people enough. But one of the lessons that God has taught me is that he has put people in our lives for a reason, and he works through people. Yeah. And so I should never get tired of asking for help. Yes. Because it is him that touches those hearts. And he works through people. He works through people. He is people. not going to come from heaven uh -huh. and come to, 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 to where you are. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So we had that social group, not just social, it was also a spiritual group. We mm. meet and... And, and learn together about marriage, sharpen each other, you know, mm. pray together, stand with one another, and they did that for us. Wow. So it is important that even as we go through life, mm. have at least a social group. Yeah. To give you that moral support, mm. to, to be with you, where your family could not. Yeah, at least friends could. They were there. And That's I so thank cool. God. Those mm. were, and that was, those were other angels. Do you know any of them that you can, you know, give them a shout out? Maybe they could watch oh, this. Oh, I, I can just say Ginger Road A Marriage Fellowship. Mm. Yeah. May God there, bless there you all. Quite a number of them. Because yeah. they all played mm. a strong, strong part. I can't mention names, mm. but we are in that same fellowship. Yeah. We, we still belong to that fellowship. That's so good. Cool. Yes. Mm. And so... They were there for us, I remember. They really were there for us. So mm. sometimes they would contribute and bring mm. for us. And yes, I, I, we were really stressed financi financially. Mm. And, um, but this, 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 uh, this specialist where we went, she was very understanding, very understanding. She, she just agreed. Mm. She just agreed to treat us. Dr. Nakaketo, if you, I don't know if anyone can know Dr. Nakaketo. From she, where, from which hospital? She used to work in Mulago. She used to head the neonatal, the premature section in Mulago, but mm. I know she now, mm. she now retired. Yeah, but she did a great, great, great job. job. Yeah. And I know there are many lives that she has touched. And so she, she just treated us. She treated us, she kept treating us. So one moment, one, one day, mm. she, she was away. I think she had a meeting in Mulago. She checked on us that morning, checked on the baby, and uh, left us with her assistant. So the assistant was, I think, I don't know what had happened, mm. but there was someone who was uh, taking care of the oxygen cylinders. And this person, I think, was new and didn't know how to, to probably open. So the oxygen, all this, it's now like a month and a half of the baby is still on oxygen. Yeah. But we are growing. I think at that point we must have been about one and a half kilograms. Oh, were growing. okay. And uh, no, 1.3, 1.3 kilograms. Mm. And 
this, uh, when, when the cylinder she was on got done, they rushed to the store where they keep the cylinders and they said there is no oxygen. Really? You should have seen trouble. Whew. There's no oxygen. Mm. So my husband said, where can we get oxygen? Mm. Now, friends, if you ever meet an ambulance, just give way. Yeah. Please just give way. Because you don't know what, what, what is really going on behind the scenes. Mm. Actually, in, during transferring from the other hospital to this one, we went in, a, in, a, in, a, in an ambulance. Mm. And we had been given time. And we're like, if she exceeds this time, we have chances, high chances of losing her. Aww. And so any time I see an ambulance, I remember myself that yeah, time. Yeah. So well. I, I just want to beg you, if you ever see an ambulance, don't mind whether it is empty or not, please give just way. give way. Yeah. Please give way. So that time, even, even the ambulance had taken someone. So a worker had to work as an ambulance. Wow. So my husband had to put the oxygen cylinders. Mm. The time we were in Rubaga, mm. and to to where Pepsi is Nakawa, mm, there Nakawa, Ginger Road, yeah. mm. and he had to go and get the cylinder. Now we reach a point now. Remember, the oxygen is done. Now the the oxygen levels. There's that uh, is it pulse oximeter something machine that keeps measuring monitoring your oxygen levels so we could see them dropping from 98 95 94 oh the pressure now the pressure was too much mm. and one of the senior nurses there tells us you know what let's rush to Rubaga hospital and temporarily be there get oxygen mm. how did we have to go god bless the border borders mm. i had to put this premature kangaroo put on my body so that they can pick my heart Your rate warmth. Mm -hmm. my warmth that could keep them going for for some minutes dress up and sit on a border border and go to Rubaga hospital are you for real you put a premature on a border border wow wow guys yes Wow. I, I just had to do everything. I oh. just had to do everything to save to that To save baby. that child. Mm. And so we, 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 I get this Boda Boda guy, we go now, you know rules and uh, rules. We reach some, the Boda says there is this other gate, we can access faster through this gate. We reach there and the gate man refuses to open. Oh. I show the gate man this car baby and I explain he refuses. The, the, the man says, maybe you're not begging properly. I said, you know what? If he has refused, he has refused. Let's go through the normal process. Did he give any reason why he had refused? He said they had told him not to open. Not to open. Wow. Yeah. And so he was doing his job. I really didn't blame him. Mm. He was doing his yeah. job. And so I said, God, I am asking for your angels. I'm asking for your angels now. So we go through the main gate. We are received. And uh, they first take you through OPD, what, what, all those things. And I'm like, God, God, God. I, at that point, all I could say was, Jesus, 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 have mercy. <laughs> Finally, we get admitted to the nursery. And friends, if you're there and, and, and you're probably going through a hard time, it is okay. Let God, let God direct your path. Yes. Because I believe that situation, God created it for me. I had, I had lost hope. At that moment, I was in a season where I had lost hope and I needed an encouragement. Wow. And the encouragement could not come from people who were not going through the same the situation same as mm. I was doing. Because I would look at them, yes, pray with me, you know, send me scripture, I do what, it will be well, and it was not making sense. But I found the encouragement in the nursery. Guess what? I so we are going to be ending part one of this story here because the video is getting so lengthy, but we don't want to miss 
any of the things in this story so part two is coming out very soon and let's see you guys in part two